So hello everybody. Good morning or afternoon, depending on uh, where you're sitting. Uh, thank you for uh, participating in our first webinar. Uh, it's really exciting for all of us uh, to share uh, all this information that we are gathering the, in the last uh, weeks. Uh, we have a lot of members from different uh, industries, a lot of uh, participants from different industries, and also a lot of different interests. Uh, this is really important for us because uh, it allows us to share some insights uh, that, uh, that we hope it will be useful for, uh, for you and uh, also to help you continue in uh, building and rebuilding uh, your strategies uh, uh, in the next, the next weeks. Mm, so I will uh, introduce uh, uh, the presenters of uh, this uh, webinar. So we will have uh, uh, with us uh, Tamas Molontai, who is the Business Development Director of Europe. Hello, Tamas. And uh, he will talk uh, mainly about uh, some of the uh, finding, findings uh, uh, with a survey that we conducted with our evalu evaluators in the last, uh, in the last month. Then uh, we will uh, give the word uh, to the general manager of our China office, uh, Klan Shan. And, uh, and finally, uh, our global vice president, Jason Baer, uh, will share some of his thoughts and ideas regarding uh, the restarting process and also some action items. So how uh, how to actually restart your businesses and uh, and also what uh, uh, customer experience uh, can uh, can in what uh, customer experience can help restart your businesses. So uh, let's have a really a quick look about uh, the key objectives of this uh, uh, webinar. So what is important, I think, is. Uh, First, review the perception versus the reality. So Tamash will help us in this, uh, as he will review the consumer behavior with, the, with these results that we have collected. Then we will look uh, at, uh, at the China's case study. As you know, uh, China went through uh, this emergency earlier than, uh, than the rest of us. So they are already ahead in the process, so they can give a lot of ideas and suggestions. And uh, finally, Jason will uh, share some action items and some uh, ways to really start again to win the customers. Uh, so without further ado, I will uh, pass uh, the ball to Tamas. Please, Tamas. Thank you. So first of all, I have to apologize because I have the hiccups today and uh, I tried every remedy in the book and every remedy outside the book, but it didn't yet go away. So please forgive me if you hear the sounds. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> all of us have been through tough times, it appears. And I have to say that most of us have also been pushed a little bit by circumstances to, to change our ways of selling. And we adopted many more digital channels than, than before. And finally, now uh, we are globally, almost globally, we could say, in a phase of reopening or or preparation for, for, for reopening. This is the main topic of uh, my presentation, so the first phase of, uh, of, of today's uh, webinar. And then uh, later on, Clan, on the general manager of China, is going to talk more on, uh, on how we uh, resume our activities and come back to the new normal. Let me share my screen <clears throat> now. We created poll of our global evaluator workforce. We as Bayer International, we have uh, roughly 500,000 evaluators all over the world, and we created a sample out of them, and we invited uh, evaluators from North Africa, uh, North America, uh, South America, most of Europe, including Russia, and this time we didn't invite anyone from, um, from Asia and uh, Africa or, uh, or Australia. If you look at the balance of, uh, of this, uh, the gender balance is, is quite, uh, quite, uh, quite good. Uh, I would say that a little bit more females, as you see, 54%, 55% female, and 45% male participated in this, uh, in this exercise. And uh, most of them are in the age groups of, uh, of uh, 25 to 54, so perhaps uh, um, correlating with uh, 
in the with with the uh, willingness to to purchase. If you look about look at the the uh, the household income, th there is not much difference among regions. One thing that I could say is that uh, let me just click on the the selection tool. Uh, this is by the way Power BI, not the PowerPoint presentation. So it was prepared by our uh, data science team. So therefore we can click on certain elements of it and the data will change. So therefore now I, I will click on Europe and just watch the, the graph at the at the uh, um, bottom right corner. You see that uh, Europe is a little, just a little bit better well off, but uh, the difference is is, is is not 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 dramatical. Uh, one other thing in the in the re regional differences is North America. Um, have a look at the the general uh, propensity to to not to pre prefer to disclose the income is 11% in uh, overall in the world and if you were to to change the the filter to north america then this interestingly changes to a much higher figure just a, a, a fun fact to note now let's uh, go to the to the next slide i take out the filter And this slide is about uh, the perceived impact of the of the COVID crisis. So we asked the evaluator base um, how their their purchasing habits are changing due to COVID, how their purchasing power is seen to change due to COVID, and how concerned they are for for, for their health. And uh, here the the result is uh, that the health concerns are overall more important than the changes in, in, in purchasing habit and, and purchasing power, uh, <clears throat> but <clears throat> especially pronounced uh, in, in, in South America. So if you were to change the, the region to the South America, then you see that, uh, that on a scale of zero to 10, uh, people who, who gave 10 to being concerned on their health is 28.2% uh, of, uh, of uh, all, the, all the participants. One Further interesting age grouping is that if you change this to, to a higher age group, this only works in South America, by the way, then people are even more concerned. So it's almost 40% of them gave a maximum score for their, for their health concern. Now, if you change the view to, to North America, then um, you see that uh, also people are a little bit more concerned on their health uh, than, than, than in Europe. And uh, here, the young people, in contrast to, to South America, they are far more concerned uh, for, their, <clears throat> for, their, for their health. Now, if you go back to Europe, but this is also true for the overall population. Let me go back to Europe. And, and we, would, uh, we would click on the health concerns, the top, the top people on the health concerns, so the, the, the people who gave a score of 10. <clears throat> then what we see is that uh, those people who are very concerned for their health uh, have a larger drop in purchasing power and an even larger drop in their purchasing habits. <clears throat> so they actually purchase less than how much they, they could purchase. This is also true for, for the entire population. So if you were to take out Europe, you see it's the same trend, which just means for us, all of us, hopefully that this is an opportunity. So people have conserved some money, they didn't spend it, and, uh, and, and there, is, there is a possibility to, uh, to still um, uh, get them back if you're, if you're, if you're tactful, if, if, you're, um, if you're good and in showing them the, the safety and, uh, and tackling it from a customer experience point of view. Finally, one thing which is interesting to see is that those people who think that uh, the COVID impact will be long lasting, they are more concerned. This is not very surprising, but you see that uh, they are more concerned for their health. They are, um, they are more concerned in, in, in purchasing and it's a little bit larger even the loss of their, their purchasing power as you see. Finally on this slide, uh, it is interesting to see that uh, how important people uh, consider personal interaction before making a buying decision. This is at the top, um, I mean in the bottom uh, right corner. Uh, naturally, people are more interested in personal interaction when purchasing uh, durable goods. For example, in the automotive business, this is very important. It is uh, a little bit less important in the other, other cases, perhaps a little bit in, in financial, but uh, in the general population, for example, in terms of groceries, uh, people are quite, uh, 
accustomed to ordering online. It might be uh, surprising to look at the hospitality here, but this is not about stays in hotels. This is the decision about uh, and the booking process about uh, about uh, going before actually staying there. Or it, it also could mean, of course, uh, food take takeaways. One interesting demographic uh, situation is again in South America here. <clears throat> If we were to uh, click South America, nothing changes much if you see, but if you, we click the, the people who are 65 or more, then the change is dramatic. And even in groceries. Uh, this, uh, in our opinion, just means that uh, in South America, uh, older people typically like to socialize in store. And therefore, for them, the personal in interaction is, uh, is, uh, is much more important. Let me uh, click the filters and get them away. Um, and let's go to the next slide. There are some people in the waiting room. I just want to raise the attention of our staff, uh, nine people in the waiting room. Um, this, um, this slide is about the impact of, uh, of COVID-19 on spending. And uh, this has some not so surprising facts. Obviously, we were expecting that people will, uh, will spend less on things that, that influence their appearance, so for example, on cosmetics or on, uh, or on well-being, and uh, even on clothing. But people would spend more, they would, they would stock up on food, as we see, uh, many people increase this spending, and uh, people would, uh, would, would spend more time online, including uh, online gaming, and uh, they would spend more on, uh, on cleaning the houses. Uh, here, again, something which is not extremely surprising is that if we go and, and check people who, are, who think that COVID will be uh, with us uh, long term and it will have a longer impact, they are more concerned. And as you see, compared the, the darker bar to the, the less dark bar, uh, people are just reducing their, their clothing purchases more, reducing almost everything more if, uh, if they think that this is going to um, be with us for long. If they are just a little bit concerned about that, this is the average. As you say, that this, the scores don't really change from, from, the general, from the general average. Then region-wise, uh, um, the impact is similar. So there's not much change across uh, global regions. One thing I could say that perhaps in South America, uh, the changes are just a little bit more pronounced. I don't, I, I don't, I don't think it's a very big change, but it's a little bit more pronounced. The, the reduction um, impact is, is a little bit, little bit higher. Uh, one fun fact, if you were to go to North America and let's look at the liquor consumption, if uh, we pick people with, with households of two, two persons, look at the liquor increase, it's, it's very pronounced. But this doesn't happen anywhere else and it just happens with, uh, with, with people of, uh, of two households, or, or two people in households. Finally, uh, one thing which is interesting in, in terms of uh, a driver, is how much we spend on educational material. And what we see is that those people who can't even spend on educational material and, and they reduce this, they reuse everything across the board, almost everything, uh, even, even insurance, which is uh, something that, that uh, in, in a normal situations, if you go back, uh, people don't really change. So the majority of people consider this as a long-term investment and they, and they don't really change it. Finally, on, on age groups, uh, um, there's not much difference. Perhaps uh, I can say that uh, younger people, so uh, 20, 20, 25 to 34, for example, of course, we would expect, uh, uh, say, even this, this group is perhaps better, that they they, 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 they are a little bit, uh, no, this is not, not, I wouldn't say this is right. Perhaps here a little bit, they, they stay a little bit more online. But, but again, the, 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 the changes are not, uh, not very significant. Here, what uh, I want to mention to you is that this represents, of course, a big opportunity for all of us. Because as you see that people are reducing uh, consumption, but uh, we also ask them that how would they come back? And we, what, would, what would mean for them a situation when they would come back? I don't have a slide on this one now, but uh, I can mention the, uh, the results. So the first, the most important uh, thing for people to go, come back is 
is to hear that the virus is under control from some authority like the WHO, for example. But for, importantly for all of us, the second most important uh, uh, category here is to be informed by the business, so by yourselves, uh, that, uh, that uh, action has been done to, to improve sanitation and, and that they are, they are welcome uh, uh, to be back. This influences 54% uh, of the decisions. And the third uh, final category here beyond the other is the availability of, of the vaccine, but it, it is less important. Uh, this has only 39% um, of the people. Now, the final slide in this set is about um, online ordering habits. So we asked the people, this uh, top left uh, chart, uh, of how likely they are they are to continue purchasing the majority of their uh, uh, consumer goods online. So the majority of their consumer goods. And we can see that uh, the green parts, almost half of them actually would continue doing this even after the, the COVID impact would peter out. Then it's very interesting to see that 37% of these people have explored new products, new brands. Why is this so? They couldn't go to, to their usual shops, which are perhaps either the large uh, businesses keeping the, the same brand, or perhaps they are businesses in the, in the vicinity, but they have started to order online. So 37% have explored new products. And let's click on, on, on this part. So if you, if you focus only on people who are exploring new products, new brands, then we can say that an overwhelming majority of them, uh, really, uh, really large majority, um, like this is like 63%, uh, uh, they would stick uh, with these new brands, which is very interesting. And if you go back to the, to the people who didn't explore new brands, there we see that this, this uh, loyalty has uh, decreased a little bit. It's only half. And very interestingly, uh, the neutral, uh, slice here is almost 40%, which again is a great opportunity. So if, if you're able to convince our customers with good sanitation and, uh, and excellent customer service, excellent uh, customer experience, uh, there, is, there is quite a, a bit of likelihood that uh, we can convince them to, to get, uh, get over to us. Uh, I wanted to, to mention again a few facts about, uh, about the purchasing power and purchasing habits. As you see, the green bars, uh, they are the, uh, the purchasing habits. And uh, this is on a, on a scale of 0 to 10. And the higher the, the score, uh, the worse they think it is. So they, the more they reduce their, their, uh, their consumption uh, behavior. And the, the line here, the blue line, is the purchasing power uh, on the same scale. So, so the higher it is, uh, uh, the bigger the reduction. And as you see, the, uh, across the, 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 the income groups, uh, everyone thinks uh, relatively in a stable manner that they will reduce their consumption, but uh, uh, this is not fully in line with the purchasing power re reduction. And uh, in this, uh, this bracket of 75 uh, to 99,000 99, euros uh, uh, annual household income, it's very pronounced to see that people save money and, and, and they just don't spend all the money they could uh, on, on consumption in, 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 this, uh, in this environment, which again um, represents an opportunity for us. Let's see the next and final slide for me. Is just to remind us of the positive situation that 58% uh, of our respondents are ready to go back and shop in store already. And we just have to convince them and uh, make them secure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tamas. Uh, I think that for me, it was really clear how uh, the brands and businesses, uh, they have to provide uh, some clear differentiators in, uh, in this sense. Uh, the customers have purchase power. Of course, it can be reduced now, but they still have. So I think that they f the feeling of uh, being unsure, it's more important. So it's something that is temporary. And, uh, and the businesses should, uh, should understand how to prepare to shift from, uh, from this phase three to the phase four. A um, couple of things before going to uh, pass the ball to Clan. Uh, I would like, first of all, to, to remember that uh, uh, we are recording this session, so we will also be able to share it with you uh, in the future. Uh, but also, 
uh, there's the information that you have seen uh, we will also share with you so you can also be able to uh, check and uh, finally if you have any questions please uh, uh, write here in the chat uh, so we will collect uh, and in case we have some time at the end uh, uh, we will reply otherwise we will collect them and uh, we will reply separately uh, in our further communication uh, so now I want to introduce uh, uh, Clan Shen uh, our general manager from China uh, he will uh, talk about the case study and uh, on China and how uh, we are going into the fourth phase uh, there well um, basically just help you to go through the flow of, of the, uh, the virus situation. So phase one, we did have crisis management. And basically at that point of time, that was basically in January and February and maybe early March. And then phase two, digital adoption is basically what we can offer. So everybody has been working from home. And then we have been wor working with our clients for some online programs. We are providing some solutions and everybody has been doing something very very much differently from the previous uh, stage. Then phase three, uh, we were really trying to do a lot of preparations and try and get back to the office buildings to work. Many of our clients, our friends, our partners, they're just trying to do a lot of things for preparations, some um, uh, precautions or some, some of the uh, different working styles so they have to get prepared. And then uh, it's really about the resumption. So resumption is really about a lot of different perspectives. I'm gonna to, going to update you in the in the in the slides later. So, so the impact on China. So there are a lot of numbers I wanted to share with you. So firstly, if you look at the uh, industrial supply chain, the manufacturing, especially related to international trade, these are really heavily affected. So I mean downsides. So this is very big change. And in terms of investment in Q1, it's negative 20% investment growth rates. And if you, uh, if you do care, if you look at the previous years in China, it's actually anywhere from five to 6%. So negative 2%, 20% is actually very bad. And fiscal revenue, 14.3% uh, decrease in Q1. This really never happened in, in China in the recent 10, 20, 30, 30 years. Consumption-wise, uh, especially service-related, hospitality, tourism, a lot of things like this, restaurants, those are really suspended entirely. And in China, even now, a lot of restaurants are being heavily uh, affected. They're just trying to get, to get, to the, uh, get back to the right track. And then control over pandemic. So the government has applied some pressure on production, production uh, resumption and school reopens and also uh, work consumption. So the government has taken some measures to push for the restart of, uh, of many things. And about the forecast. So um, in Q1, China's GDP shrank by 6.8%. Uh, Again, this is very bad. And uh, the, um, the first year was uh, 1992. So that was the sharpest quarterly contraction. And then IMF forecast the whole year, throughout the, the whole 2020, uh, GDP in China is gonna increase by 1.2%. So it's basically almost break even. And then Q2 keywords, recovering and reopening. That's really what has been happening. I'm based in Shanghai, so I can see things are really getting back to the uh, new normal. Some statistics to share with you. So uh, by March 28th, 98.6% industrial companies are up and running. And then 40% schools are reopening by May 11th. One thing to mention to everybody is um, in China, we have a very long holiday for International Labor Day from May the 1st to May the 5th. So five days in total. Because of the um, sort of the successful uh, control before the May holiday here in China, so people started to uh, feel more comfortable to go out and the country are open uh, more uh, acceptant, acceptant to um, have people traveling around, especially to nearby cities and provinces in China. So a lot of people saw that, okay, things are getting better. So actually more schools and more restaurants, more uh, retail stores, uh, different companies are opening. And then 
more than 200%, 233.7% increase month on month on travel related online research in April. It's a very big change. And then 8.3% contraction of equist rates, of total retail sales of consumer goods in April. So as you can see, the trends are really getting better. Measures taken by the government, so very heavily, I would say. Uh, new infrastructure, so big data, um, extra high voltage, artificial intelligence, which is happening everywhere in the world, industrial internet, inner city high-speed transit, 5, 5G, and new energy vehicle. So by doing all of these, so the government is really trying to uh, increase the employment rates, so pumping money into infrastructure, projects to create jobs, a lot of new, new jobs are, uh, are uh, now open. And then reducing taxes on small business and requiring banks to defer loan payments. And actually some, some, company, some companies are being offered some other uh, benefits during this uh, crisis. Consumption, so different simulations to encourage consumption. We can see different vouchers, uh, FMB um, and FMCG, a lot of different things, different brands. Uh, in different fashion. And in 2.5 days, we can, some provinces, some cities are suggesting by the government that people should have uh, half a day in addition, half a day weekend in addition to the previous two. Some companies or some, some cities are even suggesting three days weekend. Uh, uh, subsidies for, uh, for, for new, new energy vehicle. So actually this has been very helpful. And, and now, especially when we get back to the uh, new normal, I saw a lot of new electronic cars on the street. So it's, it's very, uh, it's very uh, encouraging. And then um, work and production res uh, resumption. So lifting lockdowns, removing road block, block days, and uh, allowing people to travel freely nationwide, as I mentioned, making special arrangements for workers, case by case. So consumer expectations. So this is very interesting and this might look different in uh, some other countries. So China's consumers are pretty confident uh, in doing many things and their confidence mainly come from first, the government's proper preventive and control measures. If you're based in China, you're gonna see more. I mean, the government is, is really pushing very hard for many things. Um, and then timely disclosure of the COVID-19 information. So everybody in China, we use WeChat. It's, it's sort of uh, a um, WhatsApp and with a combination of WhatsApp and, uh, and Twitter. So that's what we use here in China. Everybody has the push of, from the government and main uh, media channels every day to see uh, in my city or in my district, in my um, area, how many uh, people are getting infected, or getting detected or just having different numbers. So people feel more comfortable in reading all, all of these information. And then um, stable and sufficient supply of safety materials and necessities. In China, especially uh, one or two months ago, everybody are um, mandatory to wear uh, face masks and when even going out to the outdoor um, areas. And because of the national security levels uh, of of many cities that have been brought down. So uh, we are allowed to, from time to time, to remove the face mask. But, but again, even if we wanted to wear it every, every four hours, we do have, the, uh, we have enough uh, supply over here. And then 92% um, China consumers, they actually expressed confidence in China's victory over the year outbreak. I personally wouldn't say that it's a, it's a victory yet, but we did see a very good uh, control of it. So basically the people surrounded by, and I talked with my colleagues, we, we even see a lot of traffic jams very frequently uh, on the streets, which did not happen even in two months ago. In two months ago, basically, even in Shanghai, the big city like Shanghai, the, the streets are basically empty. And now we, we see um, traffic jams every hour. And then change of consumer habit. This is also very uh, dramatic, I would say. Um, firstly, 89% uh, of consumers will be more willing to buy daily necessities and fresh products online rather than offline when the pandemic is over. So 
think about that. Even when a pandemic is over, their habits are heavily changed. I was in 90% of consumers, they wanted to buy online. This is very uh, significant. And then 75% um, of consumers, they care more about their health and will spend more on fitness and sports on future uh, things. Um, personally speaking, I, I see uh, many people are going out to, to gyms and or running in the streets. I actually uh, lost weight for about um, 10 kilo kilograms during this pandemic because I really care more about my health. So I'm speaking for uh, a lot of people. And then, um, next slide, of consumer habit, you can see 56 percent change their purchase power. So I would say most of their purchase power ha has dropped. And then 80% change their purchase habits, as you can see from the last slide as well. 75% think it has long lasting impact. This is very possible to happen. Um, and then 67% keep the shop online habit. Actually in China, many people, they already had habits to shop online. But now I, could, I can only say that Many more people really wanted to shop online. They really, during this situation, they really uh, see the benefits and they see how convenient and how easy it is. So this habit, when they have it, it's very uh, hard for them to get, uh, to get over it. And then uh, we, we, as uh, the, one of the biggest Mr. Shopping providers and one of the professional ones, so we asked specifically, to our evaluators. When will you perform an in-person Mr. Visit in China? As you can see, uh, majority, 72%, they said immediately. 11%, they're okay to do that within two to three weeks. And uh, not sure 7%, but the point is, as you can see, the, the big trend, the general trend is really very good in China. And I, and I hope this is gonna be more convincing to, to uh, you guys around the world that's gonna be uh, how your work is going to look like in, the, in a few days or in a few weeks. So um, saving customers uh, opportunities. So basically, um, I can only speak for China, many of these. Um, I mean, Jason and, and, and somebody else going to cover this as well. But uh, from, from, from China's part, more clients, or we have been talking to many clients, but omni-channel customer experience really the key target for many of the clients. You look at uh, the comprehensive research programs, consulting programs, they wanted to see how the trends gonna, gonna help their different services, gonna help their consumer, consumer customers. And then e-commerce live streaming, uh, it's, it's very heavily um, developed during the pandemic and, and people had the habit to look at live streaming things and make purchasing. Uh, needs for stay at home, and um, this is actually very obvious because many people, they can only stay at home, and now they have to make their house uh, look nicer, or they're going to buy something more in, in house, they're going to do more things in house, uh, they're going to stay at home for whatever reason, but they just cannot go out. So it's very easy to understand, so there's a need for stay at home, and, and we, we need to th think about how people's going to live and, and make purchase at home. Consumer data platform. So uh, collecting and analyzing consumer data will be the competitiveness of personalized comms. I'm not going uh, into the deep, uh, deeps of this. And the uh, omni-channel supply chain. So agile and efficient supply chain might be existed in the future comp competition. So think about your own industry. Omni-channel supply chain is, you need to uh, react very fast. So I think that's all from my side. Um, I hope that's going to be beneficial um, to you. Thank you. Thank you, Clan. Thank you a lot. Uh, uh, it was a really interesting case study. Uh, we also see that uh, a lot of these patterns, uh, of course, uh, China can give, you, can give us a, a better outlook, but uh, these patterns are uh, around the world now. So we see it happening in different countries. And... Uh, so we see also from the data that we gather that uh, we have uh, customers that are changing their habits uh, and uh, also they are more cautious. They are more cautious, they are more uh, careful about their health. Uh, they want to better understand what is happening around them. Uh, if they have to, to leave the house, they want to, to be sure of what is happening. Uh, 
Um, and also, of course, there is a shift. And uh, uh, I think what is important to notice, and it's something that is going around uh, uh, in a lot of uh, businesses, is that we are jumping right, like 10 years in, uh, in just some months. So we need to make uh, improvements, really big improvements to to keep the pace uh, of uh, the customer. So we have gathered some information from our shoppers and uh, uh, we uh, wanted to also show you what these shoppers have to say. So I will now introduce Jason Baer, our global vice president, because he's here to share, uh, based on our global uh, survey, what these customers want from, uh, from your businesses uh, uh, in order to feel safe uh, and how can you ensure is to happen. So, Jason, please go ahead. Thank you, Antonio. So, uh, as we saw earlier from our, our learnings in our survey, uh, one of the results was 54% of respondents shared the simple steps businesses can do to make them feel safe to come back. So, as a reminder, we had 1,600 folks. We had four different options here. And the number one answer that everyone came back with was communication. Uh, communication is a big word. Communication can be used in, in many different ways. But it's how is that communication going to happen? Um, you know, th there's a couple different ways of, of talking through that. So show and tell. Uh, when you send a, a communication out to someone, you can tell them everything that you would like. But I would like to see how that comes into play. Show me what you're going to do. It's great to hear that, that airlines are going to do this or that or hotels are going to do this or that. But physically show me. Maybe there's a video that can be recorded to validate it. Um, maybe there's a, a different way to show the process of, of doing these things. Here's a perfect example from my personal experience from a, a local grocery store. I do my shopping. Of course, I'm wearing my mask. I'm following all the CDC procedures and policies. I go to check out. This grocery store typically has about 40, 45 different lanes in which folks can go down. They had about 16, maybe 18 open on a fairly busy Saturday morning. Not your typical Saturday morning, but a, a busy one. Uh, of course, they had the circles validating every six feet, so we were standing within one another, and it was my turn to, and I, and I wasn't paying attention, per se, I was just kind of looking around, checking out the sodas and candy and magazines, and uh, it was my turn to, to step up to the belt and put my groceries down. Well, I was about to do that, and someone said, no, 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 please wait. Well, what had happened was the cashier came out from behind the booth. Now, of course, they're in a booth, they're shielded in, they came out from behind, and they said, please wait, sir. And they sprayed down the conveyor belt with the, the Lysol defectant, with a wipe. They physically cleaned everything, cleaned the credit card machine, walked back behind, and then kind of motioned for me to come. Um, so that's amazing. You know, I read about that this company was doing it, but now the fact that I physically saw that, it made me feel so much more comfortable. Uh, I understood why now I had to wait an extra 10, 15 minutes where normally it was just boom, 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 because everyone was just putting their, their groceries on the conveyor belt and moving forward. So that's a great example of, uh, of physically showing, not just telling. Um, people want to know what, what they're going to expect before they arrive or what this new norm is. I know we have a couple folks from the, the hospitality the divisions here. So, you know, what's the hotel process check-in? How does baggage being handled change? What's the registration process? Uh, I had a crazy idea that I, I shared with my, my team a couple weeks ago is, uh, you know, what if I walked into a, my hotel room and when I turned that TV on, there was a quick 30 second, one minute video that showed the cleanliness policy or the, the, the cleaning procedure that morning. So I turned my TV on and it has a timestamp that says on the 21st of May at 8.01 a.m., here's the uh, video of us cleaning your room. And it physically shows someone wiping down the faucets. It physically shows someone cleaning the light switches, the remotes. That would make me feel so much more comfortable to know that at uh, 3 p.m. when I checked in, just a couple hours back, my room was clean to the fullest. So uh, those are the types of uh, things that uh, we believe would be of value. Again, it's, it's more of a show, not a, a, a tale at this point. So pull the curtain back. So share the measures and standards that you're taking to assure the training of your team. Um, we're in a new norm. It's not abnormal for any of us to be wearing masks. You shouldn't be embarrassed with it. You shouldn't be embarrassed with having hand sanitizer machines in every other aisle of your stores. Um, you know, now's the time to, to set the bar high and, and to get some new folks involved in your organizations, to get that loyal and trust to your, to your companies. 
You know, if, I, if I've been an advocate of one airline for so many years, just because of all the miles that I have, great. But if they're not taking the procedures or they're not taking that next steps to make me feel comfortable to validate um, by, by what they're teaching their staff or what their hosts uh, and, and flight attendants need to do, then I'm a little hesitant about, uh, you know, moving forward there. So now's truly the time uh, to, to get your brand in front of folks, let them know what you're doing differently. Because now, as, as Tomas shared earlier, some of our, our standard brands are not available anymore. So we're going other places to, to find what the necessary items are for us to survive. And then the last thing is, is the brand ambassadors. Uh, at Bayer, we call them the, the raving fans. So now's the time truly to, to show your brand. Um, there's a lot of ways to do that. With online reputation, with the Google reviews, with Facebook. Uh, now's the most important time for you to take those reviews from yesterday, two weeks ago, a month ago, and push that to the top. You want these folks to read what's going on right now. You don't want folks to read something from, from 2018, 2017. The folks that are leaving reviews now are based on their new experience and this new norm. So now more than ever, get those folks in, in front of your new testimonials and emphasize what you're doing differently. Uh, to continue to be successful in this in this new norm. Uh, so with that, you know, if you're if, if you're not 100 percent sure how to pinpoint those raving fans, Bear is is here to help you. How so? We do have an uh, we do have an offering for online reputation, social and review sites. So a lot of you folks on the call are representing a lot of different brands. And what's your goal? How do you review all of the marketing materials? How do you review all of the social media that's being shared across on all of the different sites? Facebook, Yelp, Twitter, TripAdvisor, Google. It goes on and on and on. So why not look for a, a company? Why not look for a source that can support you in gathering all of that data into one platform and helping you with automated responses, helping you with those quick actions? Now more than ever, we need to take immediate actions based on the, the new norm. Uh, if I have an experience that uh, I didn't feel too comfortable with because of uh, the, the new norm, I'm not gonna go back there. So I'll, I'll make it clear that, you know, I don't want my colleagues and friends having that, that experience. So uh, what can we do? We can help you by providing a, a one-stop shop area for folks to document their results, provide that to you and help with uh, enhanced responses and quick responses back to your team. One other option, of course, that's out there, sanitation is the word of the year. Uh, quarantine is the second word of the year. So what else can Bear offer? What else can we, can, can we do for you in terms of validating that sanitation policies and procedures are, are, are taken through to the fullest in your establishments? Um, many different ways. I'm not gonna sit here and sell to you. Of course, you folks are all familiar with our website, but you do know that we, have, we do have sanitation audits. We can provide QR codes, uh, URLs, just different ways for the everyday customers to give feedback on their experience. Um, again, a lot of the folks on the phone, you guys are at the high level, your management, your corporate, you're not in all of your locations everywhere at one time. We can be with our database, with the folks around the world. And of course, we have the, the means and uh, goal to help continue to help you grow and be successful in the new norm. So in closing, we have a, a subject or a, a title that we keep continuing to use here. We're closing the gap on social distancing. What that means is we're available to work through these unprecedented times together. There's strength in teamwork and collaboration. We are a resource for your teams and stakeholders. We're available. There's over 200 plus full-time Bayer employees around the world that we're ready to pick up the phone. We're ready to get on a WeChat, a Skype, a WhatsApp conversation with you and just talk. You know, we've been in business now for 33 years now. We have great experiences. We have the global presence and, and leverage, and we want to support one another. Uh, we've been through tough times together. We were even a little bit ahead of the game, of course, unfortunately, with China, and, and we learned how they've continued to grow. Uh, so, you know, Bear is a family. I'm second generation of the Bear family, and our goal is to support you in continuing efforts we want to see you survive. We want to survive. We want our industries to survive. And uh, last but not least, we wish you all continued success, success health, and uh, all the best as we continue uh, moving into to 2020 and beyond. So thank you very much for taking the time today. 
Uh, Antonio, back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you for, uh, for your presentation. Uh, I think that a lot of uh, suggestions that you gave are really, are really simple items that, uh, that can be applied uh, maybe even uh, right away. Um, I think it's important that the businesses uh, are not missing out these opportunities. So they have to share with the customers. This has always been important uh, for us, you know, as, uh, as a customer experience company, we look at the customers. Uh, but what I think emerged from, uh, from this panel today is that uh, it's even more important now to share what we have, the businesses, what the businesses have. And in a certain way, we also did so today. Uh, I hope uh, it, was, uh, it was interesting for everybody. Uh, I want to thank you, uh, all the panelists, uh, for uh, their beautiful information that they shared and their contribution. Uh, I also want to, to thank you all the attendees. So thank you all for your time and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.